Aloha, welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, and I'm joined here today by Vince Valdemar, the Executive Director of Athletics at Hawaii Pacific University. And Vince is here to talk with us today about college athletics and its global reach. Hi, Vince. Welcome to the program. Grace, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on here. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's a really interesting topic to talk about today, and you've been the executive director at HPU since uh, 2013, so interesting job in position and, and see, overseeing the athletics program. It's a full-time job, that's for sure. There's, uh -huh. there's a lot to do there. Good. Could you tell us a little bit about your, your background, how you got into this field? Sure. Uh, well, so I've been in Hawaii since 2003. I was born and raised in Philadelphia and um, Midwest boy, went to school at DePaul University in Notre mm -hmm. Dame and bounced around from jobs to jobs in sports. So I pretty much had about 20 years in, in sports, in the sports world, both in professional and, and now in college. Um, but in 2003, my, uh, the University of Hawaii had a job opening for a fundraiser. Mm -hmm and um, they believed what I was saying at the time and hired me. So I was, <laughs> I was Good job, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I was there for about 11 years and it was a great experience at University of Hawaii. But then in 2014, we, um, Dr. Bannister at the time was looking for an athletic director here at HPU, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, it was good timing, it was a great opportunity for me, and, and I'm lucky I got it, and I've been here since. Okay, excellent, yeah. yeah. So tell us a bit about the athletics program at HPU, and then we'll talk a bit more about, you know, college athletics, and, and then the, you know, the, the kind of internationalization of, of the student-athlete uh, population. Sure, uh -huh. definitely. Um, you know, HPU is really unique. I mean, not only just it's an urban campus, but our makeup of international students for our athletics programs, you know, facilities are always important and being in downtown Honolulu, it's it's a little bit of a creative challenge of always trying to find places for our student athletes to practice and to compete. So, you know, that that makes it, you know, a little bit more of um, you know, a, a special type of student athlete to come to HPU. Um, in terms of our makeup, we have about 250 or so student athletes in, in athletics. Mm -hmm. um, about 55% of those are from the mainland. Mm -hmm. And we have about 20% or so from uh, international. And then the remaining, what does that equal? 25% mm -hmm. are local, mm -hmm. local kids. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice balance of mainland, local, international. And it makes for a great experience if you're a student on a soccer or volleyball or a basketball team, you are experiencing the world with a lot of different kids from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so extending your education, international exposure yes. while you're on the team through your teammates. Uh -huh. I went to school at um, DePaul University and played tennis in, uh -huh. it was in Chicago. And I mean, it was a great experience. I loved Chicago, I loved DePaul, but it was a kind of a different makeup, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when I compare what I saw in college versus what I see now at HPU, it's completely opposite with this international um, influx of student athletes, with just the urban center, with everything that's happening. So it's it's pretty exciting. I'm, you know, I, I wish I could, you know, go back in time. Or, <laughs> Don't you know, we be all? Yeah. Now, right. Yeah. Uh -huh, right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you know, when when probably when you and I were growing up, right, there there weren't as many international athletes in the pro ranks or in college. I mean, is this kind of a new development over the last I don't know how long uh, to have international student athletes join the NCAA and you know, I, I think it it's been around, and and I think you're right. There there has been a little bit more of a, a big boom of that. I know that you know there's always some that are, are coming to the U.S. for you know competition or for academics or whatever it is, but you know I, I started to notice it more now just because in Hawaii you you really pay attention to you know all the different cultures that are here, mm -hmm. and I just really started to notice that wow it's 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 a trend that's c continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that it's Hawaii, I mean, you know, it, it's, a, it's a destination university, right? People love to just be in Hawaii, so it also adds to that. Mm -hmm. Good climate for sports. Yeah, it's and pretty good for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not ever, you know, we're not ever trapped just indoors, lots of uh, I play tennis in the snow, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Chicago. Yeah, you're, you're tough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? And, and um, I mean, NCAA is kind of unique as far as, uh, you know, the U.S. Uh, collegiate approach to, to athletics because in, in a lot 
lot of other countries there there isn't this kind of organized collegiate athletic organization that's that you know NCAA represents. Yeah, I mean you're right. It is. I mean the NCAA has um, a lot of regulations. There's there's a lot of policies. I mean it's it's really it's a big business, right? Mm -hmm. I mean you have probably. Um, maybe a thousand, eleven hundred schools that are part of the NCAA. Mm -hmm. You have Division One, you have Division Two, II, Division Three, and, and there are makeups within those divisions. But it's it's really trying to promote, um, you know, membership among the schools and healthy competition and fairness. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have, you know, gender equity and Title IX concerns, and so all of that plays into fielding and managing and promoting and you know, growing an athletics program. Mm -hmm. And that's what creates a lot of the gray hairs and <laughs> uh, the bags under the eyes and the lack of sleep. But, uh, you know, we like it. I'm not here. Not noticeable no, at no. all. <laughs> Good lighting. But you do have a lot of programs. I mean, the athletics program yeah. at HVU has grown. There have been several programs added right in the last few years. Yeah. I mean, we, we're at 14 now. Mm -hmm. So 14 programs with 250 student athletes. Um, you know, and, and I, that's a healthy balance for us. Uh, you know, we recently, maybe four or five years ago, added a sport, which was acrobatics and tumbling. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it had never existed before. So that was a sport that nobody knew about, but it, it became a sport through a number of individuals and organizations. HPU jumped in and said, this is a sport that makes sense for us. And we have 25 to 30 young women mm -hmm. that compete in acrobatics and tumbling in the nation. And we've probably finished three the past three, four years. So mm -hmm. we're pretty excited about that. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as far as like the gender equity um, kind of clause of the, the NCAA, that means uh, that we have equal representation of, of men and women. How does that specifically so, work um, out? Yeah, you're, you're touching on it. it mm -hmm. Part of it has to do with um, our relationship to our to the university as whole. Mm -hmm. So, what, for our university population, I and I don't know exactly what the number is. If we have 55% women and 45% mm -hmm. men, then our athletics program should reflect that. Okay. We should have 55% mm -hmm. women participating in sports and then 45% in men's sports. Mm -hmm. For us, um, we have six men's sports of the 14 and then eight women's sports. So mm -hmm. for our numbers, it, it comes out to, it's very similar, very close to what the university numbers look like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you were saying earlier, you know, like HPU and, and probably Hawaii institutions as a whole, it, it's attractive because it's in Hawaii, but I mean, there's also the distance for traveling for student athletes. Is that a challenge? How it is, <laughs> it is. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's a, it's a, plus and a minus, depending on you, how you look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our student athletes, they love to travel. So then it's a plus. They get to go all around the country to compete and represent the university. Mm -hmm. For the old guys like me, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you get tired on a five hour flight or whatever it is. Sometimes, you know, it just kind of wears you down. But overall, it's what we do. It's it's how we compete. Mm -hmm. um, there are four univer five universities in Hawaii, four of them that you know, are in our division. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a healthy uh, com a rivalry with the Hawaii schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and good physical conditioning, I guess. <laughs> yeah, All exactly. that travel time, yes, hauling yes. your stuff around. The thing is, I mean, and this is new, but um, in the past, they didn't have, I guess, frequent flyer miles and uh -huh, all of that, right? Yeah. At least, I don't remember that they used to have it. But now, kids are getting to keep their frequent flyer miles. Mm -hmm. And whenever they travel, they're banking those miles and those are going to turn mm -hmm. into something down the road mm -hmm. especially when you live in Hawaii and you have to go to California two three times every year that's you know that's nice mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. bring mom bring mom and dad to Hawaii then on your on your miles yeah that's a that's a nice perk uh -huh. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, and how, how does uh, athletics help benefit the, the students, particularly the student athletes and the university as a whole? Um, I've always felt that you know athletics is, is is an integral part of the university, um, you know, and, and it does a number of things. I think that you know the, the, the main one that we not normally see on television and, and in sports games is school spirit. Mm -hmm. Really brings pride to being a part of the university when your teams are out there competing and winning and representing you. Um, I also think that it, it adds um, you know, some advertising, mm -hmm. right? So 
for a university that's out there that you know that's focused on enrollment and, and wants a, a healthy enrollment base, mm -hmm. you know, student athletes and athletic programs are out in the news and and they're in the paper and the TV and radios, and, and that helps drive enrollment for the university. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're selling tickets, you're selling parking, you're selling, you're making money as a result of athletic programs. Mm -hmm. You're selling shirts and things. So that's revenue for the for the athletics program in mm -hmm. the university. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other one is that, um, you know, it's this diversity side. You know, athletics brings a unique set of individuals to a school, mm -hmm. right? If, mm -hmm. if it's basketball, you're seeing a lot of tall people or volleyball gals, you're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of tall and, you know, um, so y you get this diversity not only in, in ethnicity, but it's also in, in culture and lifestyle. I mean, they've been mm -hmm. in sports for many of their years. So you add that to the university and it really helps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, and, and, you know, it seems like also it provides, because it, it's, it is tied to some scholarship money, it provides opportunities for some students who might not otherwise go to university. Yes, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. Right there alone, I mean, you know, it's, college is expensive and, you know, financial, financial help and scholarships are, are a big driver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it seems that yeah, a lot of uh, you know, uh, there's they, they are. It, it's an amateur. You know, we have an amateur orientation in in the NCAA, um, but you know, it's still it's something that they're committed to that they need to structure their pro, you know their schedules and their lives around. It's a full. I mean, for our student athletes, they have to juggle school, they have to juggle practice, they have to juggle competition, they have to juggle travel. They have to juggle social life, right? Mm -hmm, they, I mean, mm -hmm. We want them to go out and do things. They have to juggle community service because mm -hmm. it's important that our student athletes are out there helping the community. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot in the course of a day and over the course of a semester. So yeah, uh, we're proud of the, the kids that we have at HPU because they can balance it all. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. good training for uh, success in the after graduation life. <laughs> yeah, the kids right now, they're very impressive, right? Uh -huh. and, and it helps because at the end of the day, we're developing them and getting them ready for after they graduate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's some interesting, yeah, interesting points. Um, so when we come back from the break, we'll talk a little bit more about, yeah, some of the student successes after graduation. Fantastic. Okay, thanks, Vince. Right. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just one minute. Back to Global Connections. Hi, and thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Justine Espiritu, and I host the Hawaii Food and Farmer series with my co-host Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. Every week, we bring on farmers as well as all the other individuals and organizations that help support a thriving, sustainable food system. In fact, it's interesting to learn what others are doing so you don't have to be a Hawaii resident or producing food on Hawaii to be featured on the show, like today's guest, Wyatt Bryson of Jewel of the forest and Michael Lab Solutions. Aloha, thank you. It's been a pleasure being on the show. Um, I love uh, seeing what you guys do and I really support your mission. And uh, it's really nice being back in Hawaii. And uh, thank you again, it's an honor. So you can see guests like Wyatt every Thursday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Welcome back to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, and I'm joined here today by Vince Baltimore, the Ath Athletic Director at Hawaii Pacific University. And we're talking about college athletics and its global reach. So welcome back, Vince. Thanks, great to be here. Great, great. And we were talking about how much um, college athletics can contribute to a student's success after graduation. Um, yeah, how, how are students doing, do you know, like keeping track of students, what they do as far as athletic or, or professional after they graduate? Um, you know, in school, we, we try to do as much as we can to help and support them mm -hmm. because it is, it's a difficult time. I mean, you're a young person from 18 years old on up. You might, this might be the first time you're away from home, it might be the first time you have a bank account. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's a lot yeah. of change. Yeah. And in addition to it, they have all the responsibilities that we talked about earlier of practice and community uh -huh. service. And uh -huh. so it, it is kind of overwhelming. But I think our athletics department and most athletics departments are there to support and really kind of nurture the student athletes so that they are, some of it they have to do on their own, mm -hmm. right? They have mm -hmm. to pay their own bills. Mm -hmm. They have to figure out a budget 
on what to eat and what not to eat, mm -hmm. right? Some of those things. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, um, we do a good job of really being there and not enabling them, but just kind of always being there ready to help. Mm -hmm. Academically, you know, they have to go to class. They have to, they have to take their tests. I mean, you know, that's a part of growing up. That's a part of the college experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, and there is, there have been like historically, not too recently, but historically, like with some cases, right, where where maybe there has been uh, some dissatisfaction with student performance in some universities and uh, on the mainland, some kind of uh, well-publicized one. But yeah, it seems that most programs, if you have the proper support, it is a good, you know, kind of a good format for, for getting students prepared for, you know, independent adult life in this transition. I think so. And, and I think the, the advantage that HPU has is that not only will you be prepared for life, but you're going to be prepared for the world. Uh, you are, mm -hmm. we are in a global society in downtown Honolulu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, some of the kids that we've seen have come over from the mainland, they've never met somebody from France, Spain, Germany, Australia. I, they've never. Now, yeah. they're living with them. They're yeah going to school with them, they're practicing with them, they're understanding. So this really kind of broadens their perspective and, and, and really it makes it stronger for them. Mm -hmm. And we have students uh, from, student athletes from Japan as well, and and where else? It seems like a good representation. You know, I, I, I did yeah. a, a search the other day. Um, we probably have 18 to 20 countries represented in athletics. Oh, wow, okay. Um, uh -huh. I think our largest, uh, largest student athlete population groups are from Australia, um, Spain, and Germany. Mm -hmm. But we go through to Japan and Taiwan. We had mm -hmm. um, Kenya. We mm -hmm. have, I mean, just it's all around the globe. But, I mean, the Sweden. Uh, I, mean, I can't. I, there's so many different countries. Yeah. There's at least there's 20 of them, and it, it's neat because when we have a, a staff coaches meeting and we mm -hmm. get everybody together, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't know what languages speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's good. They yeah. can bone up on, yeah, their language classes at home. <laughs> we, did a, um, we did a video, um, we try and do a video for HPU Athletics and it's on our website that um, it's kind of a Christmas video, right? Uh -huh. You know, yeah. Merry Christmas everybody. So we had a bunch of students and they all said Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays in their language. Uh -huh. okay. And it ran two to three minutes long because uh -huh. So you have a lot of different languages represented. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, and how about recruiting, the international recruiting? How, how, what are some challenges and what are some, you know, interesting insights from that process? You know, there's, uh, recruiting is always about um, access and money, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you can go to that country and meet with the parents and build a relationship, and, and, and you know, there are many schools that can, can invest in that. Ours is a little bit different strategy. I mean, mm -hmm. we're a little bit more... I guess efficient in how we we recruit. Our coaches are mostly word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It's you know internet, if it's phone calls, if it's mm -hmm. you know emails, those kind of things. Um, but also because HPU has a reputation for international mm -hmm. visibility, mm -hmm. um, the name goes a long way. Mm -hmm. So when a coach from you know HPU says he's in Germany, I mean. It, kids know the the university mm -hmm. so it, it also helps it's it's a little bit of a um, a team effort mm -hmm. you, you need you need a lot of people involved to make it uh, to make it work mm -hmm. but I mean it's it really it's a part of what we do mm -hmm. It seems, you know, over the years, uh, if you're in downtown Honolulu, right, and you can hear uh, HPU students speaking all different languages, but there seems to be, you know, the representation from different languages changes, right, in the past, and especially in the athletics, I recall, you know, there were many students from former Yugoslavia right. background, Brazilian right. background, but that, you know, yeah, the representation kind of shifts around over time, mm -hmm. is the market, you know, like as far as, you know, the looking at different countries and, and, you know, are there certain countries that provide maybe more athletes in certain certain types of sports and, and so forth? There, there are. I mean, some sports, uh, some countries have um, more, more focus on some sports than others. Mm -hmm. I think for us, you know, our co it, it, it starts with the coach, mm -hmm. right? And if the coach has connections in Brazil, 
they're, he or she is going to work in Brazil okay. and, and work on student athletes from that country. It's about relationships at the end of the day. You know, I, uh -huh. I think when when parents are entrusting their kids to come to Hawaii and they are yeah. far away, uh -huh. it's all about do I trust the coach and they take care of me? Is the school going to take care of my son? Those types of relationships. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, um, you know, our coaches are, are really our coaching staff is is pretty diverse as well. I mean, we have a number of them that graduated with multiple degrees from HPU if mm -hmm. it's their undergrad and their their graduate degree. But it's it's an international makeup of, you know, uh, all different countries as well. So that mm -hmm. helps, right? Mm -hmm. They can always call home. Yeah. Uh huh. Sounds like kind of an yeah an intimate network, right? It People is. homegrown in the university and then reaching out to the network they have personally it is. around the world. It is. I mean, there's you know when when coaches are recruiting, there is no end to the emails that they're getting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for our university, we're visible. So, you know, an 18 year old in any state in the U.S. versus any country overseas will look at HP and say. I think I can play volleyball or baseball or basketball there. So you have this email, this, communi this communication back and forth. And you know, it's, it's just about the right timing, the right, the right coach and, and you know, the right partnership. Mm -hmm. So what, I mean, you know, we talked about Hawaii having Hawaii's appeal, but as far as international athletes, you know, what appeals to them about the NCAA system in particular? Because they could play at home, you know, uh, and get paid for it, right, in, in government-sponsored or club or other. You know, what, what makes the NCAA system kind of... Uh, that, that's a great question. I, I, I think part of it has to do, and, and this I only speak from what I've seen at HPU. Mm -hmm. Every situation is different across for every student and every university. But the students that we bring to HPU, are adventurous. Mm -hmm. They love, they love the fact that Hawaii is 2,500 miles minimum from anywhere else. They love the natural beauty. They love to be able to go on hikes. They love to travel. They a little bit more mature. They may mm -hmm. not be 18 years old. They may be a little bit older, and they're talented. They're academically and athletically capable. So, I think that that's what we've seen. That's the kind of um, student athletes that we recruit because you have to be a little bit mature to live mm -hmm. on an island in the middle of the Pacific and, and manage all these things. Um, so that's, that's what our coaches go after. Mm -hmm. And 20% and of the HPU athletes are international. And so does that pose any challenges as far as, you know, within the teams? within the program, are, what are some of the advantages as well and benefits? It is a little bit of a challenge because you are, you know, every team is a family, mm -hmm. right? And every family you have different dynamics and you have, you know, I mean, you, you, you sometimes have clicks among bigger teams, but I mean, that's that's a part of what the coach's job is to create at the end of the, at the, at the, end of the day, a family that's gonna go out and compete against other schools. And I think that's the plus side because mm -hmm. it makes it, you know, exciting when all of a sudden you have all these different cultures together that may not communicate in the same language, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. they're out there winning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and they might have done things different ways, but you know, I'm assuming in, in many sports mm -hmm. like uh, the training, the, the, the everyday practices are sort of similar. Mm -hmm. Have you encountered, you know, different different kinds of practices? Some of them are, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, the, the, most of the sports are, are, are pretty, they've been around for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. There's been mm -hmm. tennis for years and basketball for years and everybody takes best practices of how best to train and how best to eat and how best to mental toughness and all of those. And, and, and they share it from, you know, from era to era. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, for us, that's what everybody does, right? And it, it makes it, you know, it makes it fun, it makes it challenging, but it, you know, also makes it a little stressful at the same time. But it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really interesting to have such, yeah, such a diversity in, in I mean, and in, in these are people you see, you know, in the classroom, you always have different people coming in and out every semester, but when you're on a yeah. team, it's, it's much more kind of sustained contact with a group of people. It really is kind of like a family or a very close-knit community right. after a while. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And so what's happening these days with uh, HPU athletics that, that might be of interest to? Well, we're in the spring season, so this is uh -huh. February. Uh -huh. And men's and women's basketball are doing great, a great job out there. They're representing mm -hmm. us very well. Men's, I think, is in the top five in the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Women are competing hard. 
baseball and softball has started. Our right, right. national champion men's tennis team uh -huh. starts the season now to defend their title. They uh -huh. won a national championship last year. So, and golf is out there. So yeah. the spring sports are in full force. Mm -hmm. They're out there on the fields and in the courts practicing and also going to your class and mm -hmm. all the other classes that they, they go to. So it's a busy spring for us. Mm -hmm. And do we ever have teams go internationally? for, you know, for exhibition or, you know, uh, like the NFL goes to England. Yeah, yeah no, great. I mean, uh, we, we just did. Last year in June, end of June, early uh -huh. July, our basketball team was invited to compete in an international basketball tournament in Seoul, Korea. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. An amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And it was, mm -hmm. it was great to watch because we had some boys that were from Ohio that had never been out of the country. Wow. Uh -huh. To see them eat kimchi was pretty funny. <laughs> and they didn't know what it was. They just, you know, this is a growing experience for them. We took them around, and there's uh -huh. educational, cultural opportunities that they yeah. really got to see oh. a foreign country. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, that was, you know, they'll always remember that. But, you know, they also mm -hmm. competed. And, and mm -hmm. you know, our team under Coach V and the coaching staff, they, they won the tournament. Mm -hmm. So we brought back a trophy from wow. South Korea. And, you know, boys... Yeah, very proud yeah. of them. They're in Hawaii and never had kimchi. What do you guys feed them? Some of them are freshmen, right? <laughs> oh, oh. So they have never even, this is like their first trip. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so their yeah, they're diets here get to, yeah, they get to try a whole range with all these people <laughs> sure, from, that's exactly from it. all over the world there. Yeah. yeah. Well, really, that's really fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the international recruitment really provides kind of an interesting dimension to the mm -hmm. athletics program, HPU, and yeah, and helps contribute to the university's. Uh, diverse student population. Uh, very very uh, unique aspect, I think, uh, of, of the Hawaii Pacific program. Yeah, we're proud to be a part of HPU. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the program, Vince. Thank you, Grace. This is great. I hope I didn't screw it up for you. This was great fun. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, it was really fun talking to you. Yeah, yeah. It always feels like, you know, we never have enough time. Yeah. I have like 500 questions in my head, but okay, save it for next time. Then. Will do. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Vince. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for tuning in to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, and I've just fin finished talking with Vince Baltimore, Athletics Director, Hawaii Pacific University. See you next time, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Aloha.